viewers hope all of you are doing well and have been practicing what i have suggested in my earlier modules and today i'm here to discuss on another of your dreaded module which is the writing this is one module where the list of tips and tricks can be as long as you wish to make it because no one specific uh, tips actually works alone to get you a high band score so um, I'm starting off with discussing the major four aspects uh, and in which your writing is actually evaluated as a whole. Number one is task achievement. Number two is coherence and cohesion. Number three is lexical resources. And number four is the grammatical range and accuracy. All these four criteria cover uh, equal percentage of importance, uh, which is 25% each uh, of the full writing section. Therefore, you need to score equally well in all the four criteria in order to secure a good score. So let me just briefly describe what each descriptor actually stands for, uh, what the evaluator is looking for when they're marking these criteria. Number one, the task achievement basically looks at whether you have fully addressed at all parts of the task uh, with relevant, fully addressed and extended, well-supported ideas. And number two, coherence and cohesion looks at whether you're able to sequence the information and ideas logically and can skillfully uh, manage the paragraphing. Number three, lexical resources is basically uh, checks whether you can use a wide range of vocabulary uh, with a very neutral and sophisticated control. And number four, grammatical range and accuracy it looks at whether you have used a wide range of structures with full flexibility and accuracy. That is uh, a variety of complex structures, good control of grammars and punctuations and tense. If you can achieve a strong hold on all of these four sections, you can uh, easily obtain a very high score. So there are two separate types of writing tasks. Uh, one is for academic one and another is for general training one. And both the types you're supposed to uh, write two tasks according to the question paper. In the academic model, uh, in task one, you are supposed to analyze some graph or maybe a chart or some trends that is given in the question paper, uh, which is more like a report writing or analyze this kind of write ups. Whereas in general training, uh, you're supposed to write a uh, letter in the task one maybe it is a formal one or maybe it can be for a semi-formal one or maybe an informal letter however task two in both the modules requires you to write an essay in 250 words in, on a given topic uh, from a range of subjects like technology maybe some socio-economic or environmental crisis and many more to start with my number one tip would be about using contractions in IELTS writing, you're not supposed to use short forms of verbs uh, like don't or can't that we use in our regular life. Instead, you need to write out the full form of the verbs as do not or cannot. Uh, please try to maintain this throughout your writing for IELTS. Secondly, avoid using words like so, really, very, which actually displays your weak uh, range of words. To prove your strength in English, you need to come up with more impressive words, maybe like replacing very big with massive. Here, massive is a simple yet impactful word to show your grip on good English. Similarly, you can replace so scared with terrified, which is again an impressive word to use. Another way to strengthen your write-up is making proper use of uh, active and the passive voice. For example, um, the government has passed the legislation of cyber crime and security to protect people's privacy is in the active form, right? So if you write the same sentence in the passive voice, you could write the legislation of cyber crime and security has been passed by the government to protect people's privacy is definitely a stronger statement than the earlier one in the active form so if you can show a range of grammatical uses like this it surely helps you to score high the next tip here for you would be avoid repeating words while expressing the same idea now what do i mean by that um let's say you're talking about a person mr x so you write the sentence as Mr. X has recently published uh, his research paper on labor for refugees. Mr. X has thoroughly worked for his research paper. So this is one statement. But instead, if 
uh, you wrote it like this that uh, Mr. X has recently published his research paper on labor for refugees. He has thoroughly worked for this. So you're replacing Mr. X by he and also replacing the research paper by only this. And it makes a more sensible statement and impressive as well. So try to recreate your sentence in this way. Now I'm coming towards a little more advanced usage, which is uh, crucial for the writing and does help enough to score a high ban. The word here is paraphrasing. Yes, I know you have heard it a lot of time. This is undoubtedly a really important component. So what is paraphrasing? This is a rewording of something that is already written either in the question paper or even by you in the earlier section, but without changing the meaning. Let me elaborate it for you. Say in the question of task two, the statement reads as some people believe that visitors to other countries should uh, follow local customs and behavior. Now, if you need to rephrase it, you could write it as some people think that local customs and uh, characteristics should be followed by tourists when they go to other countries. So here I have changed the word from belief to think, behavior by characteristics and visitors by tourists. And at the same time, I have also uh, changed the active voice to the passive voice by using should be followed by instead of should follow. You can notice that even though I have changed, uh, made a couple of changes in the latter statement, but it still conveys the same meaning as the former one. So trust me when I say this, uh, the evaluator is surely looking for this while marking you. And if you repeat the same words or structures, it straight away makes you lose good points on the writing. Now for task two, you must know that your questions may come from around four different types, uh, which is number one, opinion based, number two, discussion based, and number three, both opinion and discussion based and number four may be situation based. You need to answer these four types in four different approaches. I'm giving out a table for you to understand better uh, how to identify the questions and how to answer them accordingly. But um, make sure that before you're answering the task, you're able to identify to which category your task question belongs to so you can prepare your approach to answer it, right? Now, again about the task two, what I always suggest my students to do is write no more than four paragraphs for it, which is pretty much the standard. Number one, introduction, where you usually rephrase the question. Number two is body part one. And number three is body part two. And number four is the conclusion where you actually wrap up the whole idea and your views on it. In the body paragraphs, do not try to complicate the whole idea by writing more than four to five sentences. That is enough, trust me. So what will these four or five sentences consist of? Let me give you some uh, description. Maybe uh, number one, uh, to start with, actually, you should always start with the topic sentence uh, where you write about the idea or the problem you're going to talk about in that body. Then you go with the support statement, that is uh, where you elaborate a little more about the topic sentence. And then uh, the third sentence should contain the example, where you use an example to illustrate the idea. And number four is uh, an alternative statement, that is where you suggest an alternative idea to the problem. And finally, you end the uh, body part with a solution, that is where you suggest your idea to solve that uh, problem. If you look at the example I'm down for you here, uh, you'll get some better understanding how to place these uh, five sentences correctly. Now, this is one important suggestion I keep giving to all my students is that even though you, the task requires you to write a great complex sentence or uh, structures, it is surely recommended. But in the course of doing so, if you're not really strong or confident enough, then just don't. Yes, you heard it right. Complex structure is something which usually comes naturally to you when writing it. But if you're forcing yourself, then you'll just end up making errors or completely distorting the meaning of the whole statement. So you don't want to do that. So even you as an evaluator, what you do prefer to mark a student by a simple yet accurate statement or a complex but a wrong statement. So you yourself have to identify your strength and present it in the most impressive ways to score a good band rather than just messing up your writing with uh, what everyone around or the guidebook says, right? Moving on. 
using cohesive or linking words is another vital area to prove your knowledge in english so instead of uh, talking much on this i'm giving out a table for you uh, where you'll find many such useful words and uh, you need to try to learn them and use these words in the writing to score a higher band lastly i'm ending with some more uh, general tips to improve your writing as a whole a for improving your grammar or learn proper uses of grammar try to collect all the four series of the school textbooks named brighter grammar well i know this is a very primary level but if you read and solve through the exercises it will surely enhance your basics if you're weak in grammar b is a writing module in my view does not entirely test your english level rather it also sees how creative and uh, how constructive your ideas are so to gain ideas on varieties of topics you need to collect all band 8 or 9 writings available on the internet maybe take a print out and try to re read at least 8 to 10 write ups every day maybe when you're just having some relaxing time or just commuting to work just try to read uh, good write ups every day so trust me this definitely boosts your knowledge and helps you gain many ideas to write on varieties of topics c um, practice writing on different topics uh, maybe you can approach someone to check the writing for you or you can hire someone online expert uh, who will evaluate your work and provide you feedback which even i often do to many of my online students that way you can gain proper direction where you actually need to work right so yeah that's pretty much about it i hope this guidelines come handy to you and help you secure your desired scores best of luck and take care till the next one bye